This week's Parsha is Parsha's Nasso. A lot of interesting topics in the Parsha we've spoken about in the past. The Parsha of the Nazir, the Parsha of the Sota, the Parsha of Birchus Kohanim, and the Parsha of the Karbonos Nesiyam, the ones that we read on Hanukkah. The reason why it's the longest Parsha, that we go through the 12 Karbonos brought by the 12 Nesiyam the tw- the, when they inaugurated the Mishkan. And the, we've spoken about before, Rav Henoch Libut Satsal explained that Based on the Rabbeinu B'chaye, the idea that we find in this parsha, that we find so many karbonos that seem to be repetitions, it would seem that this is the same off service 12 times, and it could have just told it to me once. And Rashiv explained that the each shevet nasi took the symbolism of what was valuable to their shevet and the messages they wanted to in part, and the symbolism they wanted to represent about future leaders of the Shevet and the Tachos of the Shevet and everything, and they wanted to bring that as an inauguration of the Mishkan. And all 12 Shvatim had their own ideas and their own Kavanas. But when it comes to expressing one's individuality, it also has to be with a certain uniformity. It has to fit into the framework of Klai Yisrael. That's in a person's own of all. That person can't just be a total maverick out there. And that at the same and the same idea here that when Kai Yisrael is bringing the Karbonos, it shouldn't be such a division of twelve Shvatim doing their own thing. It should be the twelve Shvatim have a unified way that they're bringing the Karbonos, and they're each bringing the same carbon with a diff, but it's really a different carbon. So it's a whole different message, a whole different symbolism, a whole different mindset. But externally, it'll be the same carbon, and so it's really. 12 different carbonos that they worked together to make sure that they would be bringing the same offering. But the Medjish Rabbah goes at length through the symbolism of all the different Shvatim's offerings. It's actually the longest parsha in the Medjish Rabbah for this reason. So Rashi, I want to talk to you on a beautiful idea from Elia Baruch Finkel on a Rashi explaining the carbon of Nisano ben Suar, the Nasi of Yisachar, so his carbon included a par echad, ben bakar, ayil echad, and keves echad, ben shnasaviola, one cow, one ram, and one sheep. And Rashi brings that his cow represents Keneged, the cow that Amravinu brought. It's Keneged Avramavinu. It says, Vaikach ben bakar, he took a cow to bring, a calf to bring to the malachim to serve them. In that story, the Ayel Echad, the Ram, is Keneged Yitzchak. We know the famous Misa of Akedas Yitzchak. You know, this Pesach, like, Vayikach Hesa'ayel, that Rashi quotes, is actually talking about the Ram that was brought in the place of Yitzchak. But as my Rebbe Rabbi Trapper used to explain, he took all the Kedusha and everything that had been, that he'd built with the Misa of Akedas Yitzchak and infused that into this carbon. So I guess that's why this, this is the Pesach. And the sheep Rashi brings is Keneged Yaakov Avinu, the Kavasim that Yaakov separated when Yaakov was working for Lavan, that he separated the sheep into what was supposed to be his and what was supposed to be Lavan's with tremendous Erlichkeit and integrity. So, Raya Baruch asked the Kasha, what are Chazal teaching us here? By Avram Avinu, we can understand it, that this action that it's referring to of Avram Avinu went to the went to get the calf for the Achnasas Orchim. This is the famous story of Achnasas Orchim, which is recorded in the Torah, which is our less, which is our our mal to aspire to, which Chazal tell us was the schus that we had the Mun and the Be'er and the Midbar. This is one of the greatest actions of Avram Avinu. This was the climax of his greatness in Chesed. We find that Kedis Yitzchak, we don't need to sell a Kedis Yitzchak, that this is something that we mention in davening all the time. This is one of the greatest chusim of Mesiris Nefesh in Kai Yisrael's history. But Yaakov Avinu, this is this is Yaakov Avinu, the separating of the sheep. This is a, this is a small action in comparison to the stories brought for Avram and for Yitzchak. You know, you talk about the greatness of Yaakov Avinu, how he had integrity with the sheep when he was dealing with Lavan. So Valya Baruch explains that. 
If you look at the Rambam in Hilchas Chiras here first to Yaakov Avinu, he talks about the honesty of a worker towards his master. Like we find by Yaakov Hatzadik, that uh, he worked for his master with all his, he worked for Lavan with all his heart, the Kol Kochi, sorry, with all his strength. So this term of Yaakov Hatzadik is an unusual language in the Rambam. It seems that that cleanness, nikias with money, is something which is tapping into tzidkus. I think specifically for Yaakov Avinu, we know that teaching Emerson Yaakov, this was Yaakov Avinu's defining midah. So I, I personally would have suggested, a little bit different than Rav Baruch, that the, I think Rav Baruch is just saying that it shows the value of honesty with money, especially in this situation. He had, you know, Mikesh Titapal, he had right to play games a little bit with Lavan, and playing games with him. But such Erlichkeit, such honesty, was really the Mida that brought out Yaakov Avinu's Tzidkos. And I just add that we know in general, teaching Emes Yaakov, that this was Yaakov's unique Mida, this was his greatness. I would think that it makes sense that this is where Yaakov Avinu's Tzidkos shined the most, it is in his Mida of honesty, that even then with somebody, it says in the Torah that he accuses Lavan of changing his wages a hundred times. It sounds like it's not meant to be an exaggeration, that it literally was a hundred times, and he the whole time, such honesty. You imagine somebody says, you know, the government cheats for me all the time. Why can't I steal? Why can't I cheat on my taxes? Yaakov Inu comes with such honesty, with such erlichkeit, and he feels that he has to be straight as a board when it comes to money and may bend over backwards to make sure he's not taking even one penny that's not coming to him. Now Baruch brings from the Sefer, the Kav Hayashar, he says, you take a rule at hand that a person who doesn't want to benefit from other people's money and certainly, Kolshkin doesn't want to benefit from stolen money and deals with honesty. He's an ish tzaddik v'yasha. Because the iker hayira v'had tzidkus hu b'mamon. The chol adam who's omid b'tzidkus on his money, he is a tzaddik gamor. In other words, how do we measure tzidkus? Says Rav Yobarach, not by one's shmona esres, not by one's fastings. It's mamonus. I just, uh, Rav Shmuel first has a beautiful shir about lanpsak.org about honesty and money, and he says that somebody went to the Chazanish, he said, he's somebody, I'm doing a shidduch with somebody, he's a big Yari Shemayim. Chazanish says, until you see how he deals with money, you don't know that he's a big Yari Shemayim. Then in fact, a person's honesty with money in financial matters, as Chazal tell us, this is uh, this and Arayos and Mominus are the two big air, the two biggies where we have the most temptations and the hardest time. And this is really the measure of a great individual of a tzidkus to be able to be strong in this area. As Chazal tell us, when a person goes up to Shemayim at the end of his life, they ask him a few questions. And the first question they ask him is, Nasata v'nasata be'amuna. Did you deal with money with honesty? That honesty, not about Shemir Shabbos, not about kashrus, they ask about money. And Revel Yabaruch brings a famous idea that the one of the roots of dishonesty in Mominus, what it really stems from deep down partly is this lack of is a lack of amuna. Because if a person had amuna in a Kaddish Baruch, if they really believe that Hashem is measuring out the money exactly on Rosh Hashanah, then they won't feel a need to play games when it comes to money. They'll trust in Hashem that they can't move that they don't need a that that's not their status, they got to do what they got to do, and they'll get the money that Hashem wants to give them, that Hashem decided on Rosh Hashanah that He will give them. So just, you could even say this is Pshat and Asata and Asata Be'amunah. Did you deal with Emuna? You could say of art, not just with honesty, but with Emuna in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Were you Erech with your money? Did you approach it in the proper way? They say a famous mice, I believe it was the Maggot of Mezrich, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, one of the main times of the Baal Shem Tov, he asked him about from people who have children who go off the derech, and he said one of the biggest problems because they're eating stolen gelt. They're eating from money that was earned dishonestly. So it's something we do have to be very sensitive to, something we have to fight the battle on. May Hashem help us do so. I wish you a wonderful Shabbos. May Hashem help us walk in the path of honesty.